That's cool. Yeah, he's not one of the ones I don't like. <laughs> I, I, that's <laughs> okay. not why I was pausing. I just wanted okay. you to finish your sentence. I was like, I thought I was treading yeah, on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he did. He shared a lot, and I was really happy that he did. Hey, everybody. Julie McMahon here. Julie McMahon from Really Famous Podcast. Okay, we have turned the tables here today, and Kara is my guest, as opposed to me being hers. So get ready, it's gonna be fun. Okay, so you're a therapist. Mm -hmm. And you might kind of slightly answer this question in any way, but I'm gonna go for it. Um, so I'm assuming there's a connection or at least an inspiration that would springboard from one to the other, but I'm not sure. From what to what? Well, from a therapist to an interviewer. Yeah, yeah. So I couldn't, I was trying to come up with that connection. Like how did you, and I think you kind of answered a little bit, I but it's an I, interesting. So that's what, right. So that's the one thing that has stayed consistent all along is that interest in people. I was going to say that. So it's because it's you like to tap into people. I love to tap into people. Yeah. And it is my favorite thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I love it. And so that has always been there. I think that's what, what drew me to psychology. And then as I started writing, which is part of, I guess, the bridge over, the writing was fine. But when I started interviewing people for, like my editors would say, oh, can you interview this person? And then I liked that interview. Mm -hmm. And then because I love TV and movies, mm -hmm. I would start pitching ideas on who to interview. And mm -hmm. I started pitching actors because that's my thing. Mm -hmm. So like Edie Falco was one of the first people. And okay. I was like, oh, I'm watching Nurse Jackie. She was Carmela Soprano. Like, let me, let me interview her. And that's when I was really like, oh, yeah. And I wasn't just, so I love what they're in, mm. but I also just love getting to know who they really mm -hmm. are. I mm -hmm. really am into that. It's like mm -hmm. you said it perfectly, tapping into people. Mm. So that's the common mm -hmm. thread. That's always been there. And the there. thing about the therapist is you get, you tap into people, but you also get a lot of the, I, I think that would be very difficult being a therapist just because you have, everybody comes with so much luggage and I don't know how, I don't know how you manage that and then go home and have a life and, do you know what I mean? I, I don't know. Yeah. There's a weight to it I would I would expect. Yeah. That would be hard to carry on a consistent basis. Yeah. I think, yes. Yeah. So being a therapist was definitely weightier mm. than what I'm doing now. Mm. So there were a few things about that. And I, I'm kind of surprised to say that <clears throat> I learned kind of early on, naturally, how to not absorb their problems. Right, right, right. If I did, I wouldn't be able to help them. Yeah, yeah, I would sure, just feel sure. like down and I would feel the same way they did. And then right. I would have no perspective on what mm. they need. Mm. So I'm sure they taught me that in grad school. But mm. I do remember feeling like that came kind of surprisingly naturally to you me. Could do that easily. I would you could be kind of, in with them yeah, totally, yeah. but I would be analyzing it because yeah. that's my job yeah. is to put the pieces together of the puzzle as they're mm. telling me their story. It's my job to figure things out about it. So my brain was working the whole time. Right. So it wasn't just my heart getting heavier. And so that, so I didn't really take it home with me. There were some scary people I had. Mm, I that bet. was something I did take home with me. Right, right. That I felt like they were getting a little too close or that they weren't, maybe they were, had some feelings that they needed to have with somebody. Mm. And I was the one, and that's called transference. It's a technical yeah, term yeah, no, and that's normal. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't comfortable with that at all. Mm -hmm. And I had a family. I had little kids at the time. Mm -hmm. And I really needed that separation. So that mm -hmm. to me was a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, keeping everything private. My family private from mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing that was hard was that I had to be that blank slate for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they can relate to me however they need to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as a therapist, I was trained not to, not to give too much about yourself. And so that, I felt very serious of a person. Like I had yeah. to be a serious person and yeah, you know yeah. me, yeah, that's yeah. not really who I am. No, I, I mean, you, I, I can you. be, but I'm both. Yeah. I go back and forth full range. Yeah. So that felt limiting. Yeah. 
So that it's was interesting the, you say that because I, I don't know why, but my brain's starting to spin in regards to the, it's, there's an odd connection to that and being an actor a little bit. Oh, really? Well, just like, you know, working and then not taking it home. Right. How yes. do you kind of let go of that? Right. And then what does that when it comes into your life, what does that mean? Right. Yeah. How do you manage your family life and all of that kind of stuff at the same time? Right. And I think some actors probably do more of it and it's harder on them. And then also, you know, you play a serious character and are you too serious? Yeah. You play a, a ridiculous character, you're too ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like right. you go to those extremes. Well, I remember Jesse Eisenberg telling me when I interviewed him, he, um, I forget what movie it was. Oh, I want to say it was a movie about, who's that author? We're going to forget. Who's that? Oh, I don't even know how to describe the Help. guy. But anyway, he <laughs> played like a really, but he played a journalist who was following an author on a tour. It was called End of the Tour, I think, of the movie. And it was a very heavy, heavy, deep role. And I remember him telling me it was like, it took him forever to get beyond that and feel okay again because mm. he would feel things so deeply, mm, mm, what mm. his character was going through, mm. that it affected his choices later about which roles he would take. For sure. And then I think about Michael Emerson, who is a, who's a fellow CBS guy like yeah, you, yeah, he yeah. On, on Evil and Person of Interest um, and Lost, not, a, not CBS, but... Um, he, I remember telling me that that's not his way at all. Yeah. Like he's like, I don't think that's necessary at all. And he is a very well-trained actor. Yeah, yeah. But he told me like, no, no, he just is the person when he's acting. Mm. And then as soon as he stops, he's done. So I think it is. It's just different people. Do different, different people, things. exactly. But also different roles and different kind of projects call for different things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it really depends on the piece, mm -hmm. who's involved in the piece, your directors, your creators. Right. How much investment they want, how much investment they need. You know, there's a different level of investment for, you know, what you would consider your Oscar worthy movie in a TV show, let's say. For, right. You know what I mean? But it's kind of finding that. But I think, he, th right. I remember, you, Nip Talk was hard on you, right? I get invested. Yeah. Most, I mean, I kind of, it's, I, I find it difficult. I'm trying to learn how not to because, not, not invested, but more so, um, Affected? Affected. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, but they all ha they all do a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I kind of always pick like extreme characters too. So they're always kind of extreme in mm. some kind of way. But anyway, enough about me. Yeah. Um, but you have to get into their <laughs> headspace where I have to stay as a therapist. I had to stay out of their headspace. See it. Right. Understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not enter it. But then the switch off is the interesting right, thing. Right, but that's why it was probably easier for me to switch I off because I wasn't saying. entering it. Right, right. I was an outsider. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Um, now, you called your podcast Really Famous Podcast. It's an interesting name. Why Why Really Famous Podcast? Okay, so it took forever to come up with the name. All my friends were involved. I was like, I don't even remember how long. But it what really comes down to just a simple concept, which is I interview famous people, yeah. but I'm interested in who they really are. Oh, I like that. Again, okay. tapping into their re who they really are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the whole show. That's great. I love that. That's a different interpretation than what I did. What I, did you think? Just super famous or something? Well, I kind of went for the face value, right? Really famous people. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. just kind of, but I like that. That's kind of, that's a nice play on yeah. the vernacular and also the way that you've structured it. It's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I like that's it awesome. because it, you know, I'm not like, I don't, I'm not like, oh, this is the greatest name ever, but I do feel like I have to explain it, which is the problem though. Yeah. I have to explain it to people, but when I do, it's an aha moment. Like, yeah, oh, of kinda, course it's that. And that's God, and I look quite like that. Yeah. And think about it a little bit, right? Yeah. So there's something a little bit more behind. Usually there's, I mean, I find always there's something more behind than what you see. Yeah. Right? Yeah, of course. Um, we kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, but I read a quote of yours that says, I truly like people, right? Um, and I correct me if I'm wrong, but that's kind of um, the reason that we kind of connected, right? I think we're both kind of have this innate kind of real interest in people. Yes. Right? Um, um, and I, you seem to like to connect with your guests, so my assumption is 
and correct me if I'm wrong once again, that that's who you are as a person. Oh, um, 100%. Okay. That's who I am as a person. Yeah, yeah. Because you never know when you see a show or you see things. Right. You always, you know, you don't, you don't really know who the person is. And I've yeah. met many people who you see in a certain manner and you see them in person. They're not that person you thought they were. Yeah. See, that for me, I don't see that as often as you because you probably, are you talking about like fellow actors and things that you would oh, see them in any, a different? It could be fellow actors. It could be business people that you know or whatever. And right. Right. You kind of know, or politicians or whatever, you know this kind of personal persona. Mm-hmm. And it's little snippets, you know. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like an Instagram of their life. You know what right. I mean, right? We get this little tiny fantastic snippet, but then you get to meet them and they could be more extraordinary or more complicated or more yeah. intellectually orientated or funnier or sillier or stupider or angrier or whatever. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Or whatever. Um, yeah. I am what, what you but say. It seems to me like you are. You do have a sincere, yeah, interest in in people and who they are and what makes them tick. And well, that's what you see, and I think that's why it works. That's mm. why this works. Mm. That's why my show works. I think is because I don't have to turn something on at all mm, except yeah, the cameras yeah, yeah. i have to turn the cameras on and the voice recorder but mm, and the microphones and the microphones exactly <laughs> so those have to be turned on but aside from that i just get to be so like my preparation before an interview is i will be like okay do i have to try to get to these topics a few of these points that the audience will be upset with me yeah. for if i don't mention them at all yeah. but really i'm just in it to meet the person Mm -hmm. and get to know the person Mm -hmm. so i'm coming in as myself Mm -hmm. so i don't have to do any kind of shtick or whatever right which is like it's it's more uncomfortable for me taping an intro because i have to think about it it. yeah 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 sure you got to be on for a moment yes but when i'm just sitting here talking to you like yeah you can do that all day all day right all day every day yeah and so it doesn't feel like a show or performance or anything because that's well, that's who I am and that's what I want to do is tap into you, get to know you better. So this just kind of came to me. You said you, when you kind of prep for an interview, mm-hmm. how did you prep to be a guest? Oh, it was great. I even said to my daughter before, I was like, well, cause I have to prep for the, the tech part, right? So I had to get, so we're at the Westgate in New York right now and I had to get here before you because we had to set up the cameras and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So um, my daughter came with me today and my assistant Jack came today. And so we had to do all of that. And I remember standing with my daughter, there was a little snafu on the terrace. And the snafu <laughs> was that it's, we were gonna tape on the terrace today with a great view of the East River and Manhattan, the UN. Yep. But it started raining. So I actually remember saying to her, so we had to kind of think of everything. And I was like, but it's nice that I don't have to prep my interview, Uh which is normally I have to think to myself, okay, what do I want to make sure that I cover or whatever? Yeah. You take a look at your notes and yeah, yeah, I was doing that this morning. Right. So you had to do the prep today (laughs) and I did none, which is beautiful. I just had to prep the equipment. Uh That's it. I love it. Which was a nice change. Uh huh. That's great. Um, Okay, so I kind of think this is interesting because it kind of says a lot about you, but also says some about some people that I have some interest in, and that is some people that you've had on the show. Um, uh, there's a lot of people you've had on the show. When I was looking at, you know, when I was prepping for us to get together, I was looking at different people, and there was there's a lot of people that I was like, oh, I haven't kind of. You know, it's an interesting thing as an as as a as an audience. You kind of, and I know this might sound obvious, but you know, you get to take a journey with people when you get to see them on television or film or whatever, and you kind of <clears throat> kind of think they're a part of your life, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so there's a couple of people there who I was like, oh gosh, what are they doing? What are they? Now there's one person I think I know how you feel about them but i wanted to ask a couple of people is that okay with you of course i love by the way i love gushing about the guests who i love okay great. so i have no problem talking about let's hope you love them all (laughs) (laughs) and she doesn't know who any of these are by the way so um this is all she she doesn't know anything that i have kind of scripted down here so and by the way let me jump in and say that if it i 
there are very few people who I would look back on and say, I really dislike this person, you know, uh, over all the years of the people that I interviewed. That's good to so, know. but if somebody, if you mention somebody who was in that little group, I wouldn't throw them under the bus, but I wouldn't gush about them either. And yeah, so when I gush, it's authentic. It. Yeah. Okay. So the first one is, are you ready for it? Yeah. One of my favorites, Danny Aiello. One, one of my favorites. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Seriously. Great. It's, he, so yeah, I love him. Yep. Love, love, love Danny. <clears throat> he's one of those people. So I feel like I also took a little bit of something from him. So, all right, I'll give you a little backstory. You want to know how we got started and all that stuff. All right. So he was doing a, um, a show like a musical performance, I guess. It was just a lot of songs. It was a Christmas special on Broadway a few years ago. And I, snagged an interview with him because I really didn't think I was going to be able to. He was so busy. We did it on a Sunday between two performances in his dressing room. His manager, Louie, was there. Now, his manager, <laughs> Louis, Louis, Louis like the two of them were like this. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, tight as glue, whatever you call it, say. I don't know what the expression is, but they were so tight. And Louis, anywhere Danny went, Louie went. And anything Danny said, Louie said some things oh, about it, it too. So I Louis was con a constant in his life. So Louie's in the dressing room with us. And you can hear him during the podcast he's just jumping in and saying things so I adored Danny because he was himself like we're talking about he was well, what you see is what you get he was a hundred percent who he is mm -hmm. and so just a vibrant and really ate up life and so friendly and so real and you just knew he was just wonderful wonderful human so Louie of course kept saying okay we got to wrap up we got to wrap up and I kept trying to go push it a little bit longer anyway then Danny shows me around he introduces me to some people as we we're leaving and that was the end of that oh and and then during that time he was like yeah, we have to get together. We'll go have lunch or something. And I said, yes, let's have lunch. And he said, yes, but Louie's got to come or my wife, Sandy, will kill me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, great. Louie can come. Great, great. Let's set it up. So he said, okay, talk That's to Louie. We'll set it up. Yeah. So I leave. I try texting Louie. Nothing's getting set up. Uh-huh. I just get, my texts just get ignored. Yeah. I call eventually. I just get ignored. And then... <clears throat> Eventually, I'm going to say it was probably a year later, I really wanted to interview him. Oh, this is what it was. I was doing a video reel, and I wanted a little video, because back then it was just a podcast, audio only. Okay. So I wanted Danny on video. So I, I reached out to Louie again. I said, Louie, I need like five minutes on tape with Danny. Can, can you please set this up? So it took a million times of getting back and forth yeah. and finally he was filming something on long island a uh -huh. movie it was his last movie and he was he said okay you can come out to long island when he's on set and we'll do five minutes okay. so i made it out to long island only to find out later he and i lived like a few miles away from each what? other you and danny Get yes out of here. we found out when we were there on long island it was like a two and a half hour trek out to the dead end uh -huh. So I sit down with him there, and of course, five minutes turned into like three hours. Oh my God. And it was amazing. And he <laughs> told me things, and he just was him. And he was so, I just don't even know what to say, except that he was one of the, one of the greatest humans. Yeah. And I felt like we had more time together. I was like, oh, now we're buddies, mm -hmm. and we'll keep seeing each other. And then a few months later, I got word that he died, uh, which was awful. Mm. I felt so bad. And I went to his memorial and it was really nice because Louie then saw me there and he invited me to the little family memorial that they had after, like a little Aww. reception. And uh, yeah, that was, that was really that, except I remember at the memorial thinking to myself, I need to take a little more of Danny Aiello's approach to life. Mm, and so and what was that? So that <laughs> is being out there, putting yourself out there to people, the mm. people you love, the people you like, mm. like there's no need for a big boundary. Mm. Get together with people, show them how much you love them, mm. take life in. I mean, it wasn't just me. Everybody loved him like mm. this. Mm. You should have heard people at, at the memorial. We were all, everybody in the pews basically, we were all talking to each other, getting to know how, how did you know Danny? How did you know Danny? Everybody, it was like his way of living was transferred onto everybody there. Mm. It was a great feeling. It wasn't about mourning him. It mm. was about channeling him. Mm -hmm. And it was the coolest thing. Oh, that's awesome. What a great guy. Yeah, and I think that came across in his, with him on camera, you know, I think yes. he really kind of, firstly, he was like this old school 
actorish kind of guy, right? Just because that's the way the way that he was, but also that kind of warm heart, um, kind of the bombastic kind of mm-hmm. bit bigger than life, you know, energetic, gregarious. Yes. Fascinating. Awesome. Um, By now, the way, he had very low self confidence at the same time. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, wow. He was a dichotomy. At certain times he felt like, hey, it's me, Danny Aiello. And other times he was like, I really, I'm too nervous to even go on. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. The the next guest who I, I got a kind of funny story about this one, but Steve Buscemi. Oh yeah. Is that the right way to pronounce so it? So I there? think that I call it, I say Buscemi, but Buscemi. I think I'm wrong. Okay. I think that's the Italian way to say it is Buscemi, uh-huh. but I think he pronounces it. Buscemi. Buscemi, okay. I believe. Either way, I'll tell you a little funny story. Because <clears throat> I, I really enjoyed him as an actor, right? And then the show Boardwalk Empire came out. Uh-huh. Which, at the time when it came out, I um, was shooting and I didn't get to see it. And then I got some time off and I was watching things and trying to catch up on things that I, you know, whatever. So... I think it was probably five years after the show. It was at least a couple of years after the show had finished. Yeah, yeah. Because it's right? an older show now. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And I, so I started watching it. And then I'd go to like meetings and things, you know, and I'd be like, have you seen this show, Boardwalk? <laughs> 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 and I, everybody would be like, uh, yeah, like five years ago. <laughs> I'm like, it's fantastic. And they're like, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh. <laughs> that is so funny. It was pretty funny. Um, but I was so obsessed with it. Uh, I never saw it. You never saw it? Mm-mm. Yeah, you should see it. Because it's all this whole area. Yeah, Atlantic City. It's all Atlantic City, New Jersey, New York, uh, you know, 1920s. Mm-hmm. Okay, back to the one other person I wanted to ask you about. <clears throat> is a guy called Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe. Yeah, yeah, Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe, what do you want to know? Well, I think I kind of became a little, kind of, I became more conscious of him with Deadliest Catch, I think, was when I first kind of became aware of him. But then kind of, uh, look, he's this, the voice that guy has, and the his, he's got a great cadence and a great kind of, you know, communicative ability. Mm-hmm. He's strong, but kind of almost compassionate at the same time. He's thoughtful. He's. Have you ever heard um, his podcast, The Way I Heard It? I think I did right before I interviewed him. I listened to it because that was part of my research. It's awesome. Yes. he. I think he had his mom call in, Peggy, on the show. To the, to the oh, pod- wait. He was the podcast, right, because he... He has a book called The Way I Heard It Too. I think so, yeah. Does he read from the book on the no, podcast? No, I think the um I think the podcast came out first. Okay. Basically the podcast is about <clears throat> interesting stories that you would never have a clue that that was what was the story behind it or something. But he also does it in a really he structures it in a really cool way as to like you get like little tidbits of who you think it might be and then right. he kind of reveals it and you go, "Oh, you know that's his storytelling yeah. totally that's his technique yeah yeah and he's just great at it and he obviously does a lot of work and research on it and it's just it's great if you get a chance to look at it or listen to it but yeah um so you interviewed him and, and i did he seems like a great guy to me i don't know if i'm kind of no no i'm not saying no i was waiting <laughs> no, you to finish the sentence I, I, now, I I'm, now i'm cautious that you're gonna have one of those people that no I, no no you, not at all not no, at okay. all my okay. i'm thrilled that i had mike on the show uh-huh. let me just say this so i'm not a dirty jobs fan yeah i never really watched it that's not really my kind of show but i had him i he was coming on so i did a little bit of the research i listened to the podcast i you know I, he's the voice deadliest catch all that um but he was his so because i didn't really know him and his work that well beforehand i did something interesting i put out a question on facebook to his fan groups and believe me he has fans mm. i mean passionate passionate they love him love 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 i've had all kinds of celebrities on the show and the most famous ones aren't necessarily the ones who have the most loyal fan groups kind of committed yeah 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 
Mike Rowe is one of those. Mm. He, he he has a lot of people who just adore him, just mm. think he's the greatest. And mm. um, so I went to these groups and said, what don't you know about Mike that you would like to know about him? I don't mm. want to ask the same questions. Mm. And I, I realized from their questions that even though everybody knows him because he's being himself on these shows, they knew nothing about his personal life mm. or like how he feels about things. Mm -hmm. So I was like determined that's what I'm going for with Mike. Mm. I need to get to that personal side because mm -hmm. everybody, all these intense fans, they know everything already. Right, right. So he went there with me. Did he? Totally did. Okay. And I was able to give these fans like the greatest interview. I don't uh. mean to pat myself on the back, but it's like they'd never, they don't know this about Mike. They don't yeah. know his personal life or how he feels about not having kids mm. or relationships mm -hmm. or stalkers mm. or all of this stuff. Mm being cheated on he talked about like mm. we talked about all of this mm. and it was a gift i think to all mm. of his fans wow. and you know so he was a little surprised too but he so he said to me at one point i think i revealed that i was a therapist and he said oh well, you really put me on the couch didn't you, Cara? <laughs> <laughs> so it was wonderful it was a great interview i'm so glad we did it and he's such a smart guy yeah. too he's so smart and he's analytical and he was very honest with me i felt yeah so all of that together Thrilled, yeah. thrilled. I interviewed him and I like him. That's cool. Yeah, he's not one of the ones I don't like. I, I, that's <laughs> okay. not why I was pausing. I just wanted okay. you to finish your sentence. I was like, I thought I was treading yeah, on the yeah, rock. yeah. But he did. He shared a lot, and I was really happy that he did. Uh huh. Okay. And then I interviewed his mom, by the way. Did you really? I had he's her on a, the show. His mom has a lot to do with his life, I think, because yeah. he talks about her, her a lot in yeah. the podcast. She's like an 80-something-year-old author, yeah. and she's on his show a lot. She yeah. talks about him. She has a big Facebook following herself, That's so and cool. uh, people love his parents. Right. Yeah. Funny. Peggy. 